Matt, welcome to the fight. Damn it, we made it happen. All Holy the technical cow. issues we pushed through. We were supposed to record this yesterday, and for whatever reason, didn't so so this is planet. this is uh, not even a contractor fight. This is more like a technology fight. Yeah, for the tech me, fight. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's the Tech Fight Podcast today. But anyway, we're good now. I think we're good. Fighters, did you miss the Mile High Profit Summit in Denver, September of 2023? If so, I have an opportunity for you right now to grab the recordings. You will get all the main stage speaker sessions, all of the breakout rooms. We had three breakout rooms with great speakers going on there. You're going to get all the handouts that were given and lifetime access to the event. If you just hit the link and grab them now, you get everything that we did there so that you can capitalize capitalize on the life-changing coaching, training, and information that we brought to over 400 attendees in Denver. Hit the link and get yours now. Who the heck's Matt Warner? Because, you know, you go online and look at you, you see stuff about empire. You see stuff about some, you know, uh, uh, what, what did I see? Some not uh, athletic training, something or other. And then I turn around and there's some software and all this stuff going on. Dude, like you got your fingers in a few things and you're doing them all at a high level which is very rare so yeah. fill us in uh, uh, give us your little what well, do you got going on well let me let me let me start by telling you one I'm, I'm a serial entrepreneur i love people and i love business and um i'm, I'm an uh, uh, uh well i almost said i'm an athlete i'm not an athlete i you know what at one point in time i had to fight to be an athlete but i was mm -hmm. never athletic can i can i say that can i get away with that you could you could do what any you could do anything you want, man. Now whether people believe you or not is a different story. So well, yeah. Well, let, let's just say that that um, I grew up hard and fast and uh, kind of a, a of a farm mentality where you mm -hmm. have to wake up every day and grind it. Right. The the, yeah. the 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 cows and the pigs and the animals don't have thumbs, so they can't feed themselves. So no matter what, every day there's no choice. You have to feed them and you have to take care of them. And that's. Uh, the mentality I kind of grew up with. Now I was adopted in Nebraska and there's a big long backstory about uh, all the things. My mom was kind of a radical. She, she's kind of a crazy lady, been, uh, been through a lot. So, but today I'm 51 years old. We have about 112 people uh, in our, in our business team members. We like to call them and we have uh, five businesses, two real estate arms. So seven all together and everything that we do kind of touches each other and everything that we do tries to accent each other a little bit, but we really live by one great big philosophy, and that is culture is king. And mm -hmm. we are very passionate about what we do. I, I think I gave you a little bit of a, a teaser the other day about our Monday morning meetings. Yeah. I think it's our secret sauce. I think it's yeah. something that we do that that nobody else out there does. And and as a matter of fact, I even told my team today, I said, listen, or, or yesterday or Monday yesterday, I said, listen, guys, here's the deal. Every single Monday we get together. I've done the ROI on this. It's incredible, but it does mm. cost. To date, as of Monday, I have $111,000 invested in this Monday morning meetings. $111,000. That's real money. Yeah. That's that's real money going out the door. That means we're at 7 a.m. every single Monday, every single person clocks in. And we don't get any production until about 8.15, 8.20. It takes that long before we get the thing. And that's not even counting the productivity rate of getting work done, billables done, right? Yeah. So it's, yep. it's even worse than 111. I think we're going to be at about 137,000 by the end of the year. I have 140 budgeted uh, in my budget for this Monday morning meeting, but that's how passionate I am about getting together with my team and talking about a life skill, a leadership skill, and a safety topic. I have a safety director uh -huh. every single Monday. He does this, uh, um, a spiel, uh, a couple of weeks ago, he talked about climbing a ladder. Um, yeah. and then he talked about a harness. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we talk about, Oh, we talk about what, what is your responsibility to be the passenger in a vehicle? You're on the clock. Yeah. That that's a new one. Be doing that's this. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're a co-pilot. It's a huge responsibility. Pay attention, man. Watch out for those intersections. Make sure, be be alert. Focus. Talk about the job site. Talk about, I mean, be engaged. So we talk about these little things uh, in, in the safety portion. Um, the the This has made it work. Now I'm going to back up 
you're talking about all these different businesses we have and everybody says, Matt, you have a lot of irons in the fire. Mm -hmm. And I always say, listen, I don't hold on to an iron very long. If ever, my goal is to stoke the fire. I call myself a CVO, a uh, chief visionary officer. Mm -hmm. I really just try to paint the picture. Now, does that mean I have to get in the arena once in a while? Um, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I, I got to get out of the seat and I got to go fight the gladiators, fight the bears, fight the, the lions mm -hmm. and tigers. Oh my, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I've got to do that on it. And you know what? Sometimes it's a, it's a, a grind. Yeah. Tom, I, I, I so I read your book. Yeah. Um, and I've had about five other people uh, read your book and it is so amazing how similar our thoughts are. And by the way, mm -hmm. I feel, I've almost feel guilty because I feel like I've stolen some of your thoughts with that before I ever even read your book. But I also know that Jim Rohn and, and a mm -hmm. lot of these great, great leaders out there that have been talking about culture and, and, and business have always said, Hey, let's don't recreate the wheel. We can, we can move on. So I, I'm super impressed by, by what you've mm -hmm. done. Uh, I've, I've done my homework on you. I love your mentality of uh, make it, let's make some money. Yeah. You cannot take care of others. If you don't take care of yourself, the, so the true, oxygen man. mask is yep. so yep. real. Yeah. You, you and I've had a few conversations over the last couple of months. Every time we have a conversation on the phone, we hit it off. We're totally mm -hmm. aligned. And there were two things that stuck out at me. Um, the first is a video I saw you that I think is on your website. Okay. Uh, you do, I, I think it's you doing a morning meeting and the sun is coming up. Oh, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? Like, like, is that on empire? Is that on empire? That, that, so, yeah. so that okay. was, can, can I tell you what, what, what happened there? Yeah. Because <laughs> what, what jumped out to me is one phrase and I'm, I'll, I'll probably butcher exactly what you said, but you like, you're like, guys, it's not about how many feet of fence you put in today. Right. And, and you, then you spoke about the importance of, just I'll let you kind of fill it in because it was your thing. But like that really stood out to me. And I think it's a great example because we're always telling people to create content, show us who you are as a human being. And more people are going to want to do business with you when they connect with your values. And that video wasn't about, Hey, we're the best fence installers and all this other shit, right? It was about you as a leader, you as a team and people. And it just showed so much of the, um, the true, connections that you guys have with each other what's really important and that's why i want to direct people to it um to that check that video out but tell us a little bit about that morning what was going on so here, here's here's the backstory um and, and you know i would like to think uh that when i ran my first business in my 20s uh, i was a hot mess uh, tom I, i'm gonna be honest with you i i was driven uh for one purpose and one purpose only and that was to prove everybody that i could be a millionaire and i can make a ton of money and i can i can work outwork anybody and yeah. and i lost focus on who i was and who i really am um you know and who i want to be um and and i just completely botched it and mm -hmm. ran it i ran that sucker completely into the ground filed bankruptcy yeah. i was a hot mess uh, embarrassed my family and uh, embarrassed my wife, embarrassed my kids. Um, I've talked about getting fired. I've been fired. I've been, I, you know, um, I, I guess I've, I've been there, done that. Um, I've been at the point where you're like, okay, well, I'm not going to buy an 18 pack of beer because I have to buy diapers. Yeah. So I'm yeah. going to get, uh, the one bottle in a Brown bag yeah. so I can have one beer and I can share it with my wife as we uh, barely can afford to buy diapers. I mean, I've been in that trailer house where, where it was so freaking cold in the shower, Tom, that, that when I got done showering, I could leave a note for, for my wife uh, uh, in the frost that came through on the window <laughs> in the bathroom. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've been, I've been there. I've done that. So, so, and I yelled and screamed a lot in my first business. And, and I would like to think that now I have a different um, way of looking at business and I very rarely do I do I lose my my temper or my head. Um, I will tell people uh, you're late to my Monday morning. Get the hell out. Yeah. Uh, and and I will tell them just like that. And and they know. And I and I tell them too. That's disrespectful to walk in my me. I wouldn't do that to you. I wouldn't walk into your me. I don't even like being late for what we were doing. I was getting anxiety just because I didn't want to be late for you and me. And this mm -hmm. is just a couple of guys getting together to shoot shit. Yeah. So, here's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. 
we had about four Saturdays where I had constant no call, no shows. Now I know that that happens everywhere. Mm -hmm. I, I, matter of fact, it happens so often that it makes me sick to my stomach that, that grown men can't get to work on time. I, I just don't freaking and this, understand. And then just for context, this was recently. Right? Yes. Within the last few months, couple months, right? Something yes. like that. Okay. And I've been doing this whole context for the for the audience here, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, so I've been doing this whole culture thing. We care about you. We love on you. Uh, we're gonna take care of you. We're gonna buy you boots. We're gonna we're gonna uh pay you well. Uh, uh three years ago, I gave everybody across the board a three dollar raise an hour because mm -hmm. it because it, it was it was doing this, you know, the uh, business was tough. Yeah. So we had uh, four Saturdays where I was getting these no call, no shows. So I, uh, I walked into one of my Monday morning meetings and um, I, I lost my shit. And, mm -hmm. and I, uh, I, matter of fact, it was this very bad. <laughs> that's the cup. one, huh? Yeah. This that's is the, the coffee one. cup uh, steel. As a matter of fact, it's a different lid because it cracked the lid when I threw my coffee cup. Mm -hmm. uh, and I told everybody, I said, this is, this is a bunch of crap. I'm never late with your paycheck. I'm never, when you ask me for something, I do it. There's mm -hmm. a lot of you guys out there that you've came and asked me for an advance on your check. And I always say yes. Yeah. Now there's another story to that of why I say yes, mm -hmm. but I don't ever hesitate to take care of you, but yet you can screw me. Who the hell do you think you are? And mm -hmm. I told them, I told everybody and I had about 90 men in there and I said, listen, if you don't want to be in my circle, get the hell out of my building. Mm -hmm. Leave. And I even looked at one individual and I said, I know you don't want to be here because you are a no call, no show three Saturdays in a row. So screw you. Get the hell out. Yeah. Leave. And he, he did. And the room went silent. And I said, I only want to surround myself with people that want to piss excellence. If you don't mm -hmm. want to do that, get the <laughs> hell out of my building. I want to win. I'm a competitive son of a bitch. Mm -hmm. And these co general contractors are kicking my ass and kicking your ass because we're not showing up. We're not doing our due diligence. We're not holding them accountable. And I'm not holding you accountable. So from here forward, I'm holding you accountable. Mm -hmm. If you're late and you don't show up, you no longer work here. Yeah. You're done. Now, I do not believe in threatening. Yeah. And that that's one of the things I, again, I want to pull back because I, I, you and I had a long conversation the other day about this story. And one of the things I said, I want to make sure people understand you guys, this is, this is not Matt's um, consistent demeanor in this meeting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is a, it might happen once a year or something be, because the meeting has a format. You do it all the time. You're loving up on people. You're helping them with life skills, you know, and safety and all these different things. You And the point I want to make is you earned the right to get pissed that day when shit wasn't going right. And, that, and that, that's what I wanted to point out to people is a lot of you guys, and I'm, I'm one of them, man. I used, to, I used to yell. I came out of the Marine Corps and started running a painting company. You think I wasn't fucking a little high strung? You know, so it's like... um. And my dad, he was a screamer on the job site. And a lot of you guys that are listening to this, you're not attracting talent and you're not keeping talent because you're a dick all the time. And, and you're like, you, you're yelling in intensity has become like the Charlie Brown voice, wah, 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 where they don't hear it anymore. It yeah. doesn't have any impact because you're not, um, you, you can't just be at this intensity it, it, being a dick all the time. And that's, that's a stereotypical leader in the trades too, right? Is that uh, just a bunch of tough guys that are screaming and yelling and throwing hammers at each other. And so I, I just wanted to point out for everybody, dude, that um, you, you earn the right to get pissed um, and to have that moment because of all the deposits you have put into your team. How long have you been doing this Monday meeting? Since uh, 2015. Okay. So uh, eight years. Eight years you've been doing that. In eight years, how many times have you had a moment where you've chucked the coffee cup or something like that? Probably six. Okay. So just think about that. So what's that? 300 meetings a year? 50 yeah, a year? 360. Well, there's no, I'm sorry. There's 52 a year. Absolutely 52 so, a year. We so, never miss. Okay. All right. So 52. What did I say? Times eight is yep. 416. Six divided by 416. 
That's like one and a half percent of the meetings you right. got pissed and called them out on their bullshit. So I'm just trying, I'm trying to be like, I'm, I'm idiot proofing this for those listening that if you're wondering why you can't build a stronger team and a stronger culture, you're not loving up on your team as much as you need to be consistently. And you can still be kind and tell them the truth and all this other stuff. But a lot of you guys are defaulting. Yeah. You're a guy doesn't show up one time and you're losing your shit when who knows? Did you ask him what happened? Hey man. Yeah. Amen. Like, what happened? You know, yeah. but in your case, when it was starting, cause you told me on the phone the other day, like we started getting a little complacent, right. Yeah. And you know, things were going really good. We're hitting our numbers and this and that people started thinking they could not show on a Saturday. And you're like, we don't fucking do that here where that's, you know, yeah. Anyway, I'm beating this into the ground, dude, but what do you, um, so, so, hey, so yeah. let me, let me get to the point of what you saw. So we, this was three weeks. We had three weeks of pretty tough meetings mm -hmm. uh, where, where I was, um, uh, the, the very first one, I set the tone. And then the next week I said, listen, I only want to surround myself, uh, uh, with in a circle. And, and I've, I've, I've done some research and research tells me that the square root of however many people you have actually do 80% of the work. So mm -hmm. if we have a hundred people, 10%, only 10 people do the work. And I told these guys, I said, listen, I went through and I counted up. There's 27 of you that are ass kickers, but I want 47. And then yeah. I want 67. I want ass kickers every single day. What do I have to do to get people that want more? And I want you to want as much as I want for you. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that we talked about for three weeks. We did this. And then on the fourth week, we had breakfast mm -hmm. because every single person made it uh, that the week prior, we had no, no missed calls. We did have to, we did have to remove a few people. Uh, uh, a few people lost their jobs. Um, and, and that is something that doesn't happen. I, I can yeah. tell you right now, I've probably fired um, eight or nine people under 10 for sure. In yeah. the entire, since 2009, when I started this, uh, 2015, it really pushed on the gas, but, to, but cause I had a side hustle and I didn't understand how serious I had to get, but that's a whole nother mm -hmm. topic. But so <laughs> what you saw was breakfast because I believe that when you eat around the table, you bond, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and I'm a big JC fan and JC sat even with his men right before he was going to go to the cross yep. and, 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 and actually sat. And I told these guys this at the, at this Monday morning meeting that you saw with, with the, with the breakfast, I said, listen, yeah, JC had breakfast, whether you believe he's a son or God or not is irrelevant. It's a great story because he knew the one guy on his left betrayed him and he knew the guy on his right was going to deny him. And he even washed their feet and ate with them too. Mm -hmm. So some of you out here, you're going to fail and you're, you're going to probably have a no call, no show, mm -hmm. but we're going to eat together and we're going to celebrate this together. And we're going to celebrate our victories because as of that day, we were caught up. In three yeah. weeks, we were we were substantially behind. We were twenty seven hundred feet behind on one job. We were a uh, thousand feet behind on another job. We had four or five small jobs that that had all kinds of callbacks, and we don't allow callback. We don't like callbacks. You know, in business, you yeah. can't have yep. callbacks. That that's the number one killer. So we had breakfast together. We ate breakfast, and and before it even started, um, I walked outside. Matter of fact, I had a crew there that was going to be doing some other filming for our software. Mm -hmm. And I just said, Hey, you might want to get this Monday morning meeting. This is going to be good. Um, mm -hmm. And I walked outside and it was funny. The whole crew was set up on the inside, ready for my Monday morning meeting. And I walked outside and I saw that sun just peeking up over the horizon, which Yep. I've seen a thousand times in my, in my lifetime and I've seen it all over. And I told the team, I said, listen, at the end of the day, this right here is what it's all about. Spending some time with people that you care about, people that you give a shit about and the mm -hmm. people that you, and, and we're going to love on you today. And I had all of our leaders in our company. I had seven or eight of our top, top people feed the people that were out in there. And I told them, I said, these people are thanking you. This is their thank you for you for kicking ass for the last three or four weeks. And we we catered in uh, bacon and eggs and biscuits mm -hmm. and gravy. And we had all kinds of food. And and we sat around and we, and then, when, then when we got done, most, most guys would say, all right, hey, we're done eating. Now, now get back there and go. I didn't. 
Mm-hmm. I said, you know what? Everybody, throw your plates away. Take 20, 30 minutes and visit. Get to know each other. Because today we're celebrating our victories from three weeks. And when we kick ass and we take name, and, and I like to say we piss excellence because I re- that's mm-hmm. really uh, yeah. the, the, the term that guys have, uh, have la- la- launched, launched, uh, latched onto lately. But now let's celebrate this victory together. Let's just take a deep breath. Because too many times we spend uh, so much time worrying about trying to catch our breath, but we forget about every once in a while just take a deep breath and, and relax yeah. a little bit and just say, you know what? It's okay. We're going to love on you today. Uh, so what you got to see was the opposite end of hell of hell. three weeks. We had three weeks right. of hell. But I truly believe that if you love on your people enough and that, and, and so I, I had a, so every Friday or most Fridays I do a, a training thing here. And, and I was talking to one of the guys and I said, Hey, we got to love on each other. We got to take care of each other. Mm-hmm. And, and I looked at one of the new newly promoted guys and his boss got terminated. And I said, um, I said, you know, you really like such and such. I don't want to say his name. I don't want to embarrass him. Mm-hmm. And he goes, he goes, no, he was a, he was, he was really close to me. He was a good friend. I said, but you didn't love him. And he kind of looked at me like, what do you mean? I said, you liked him a lot. And he was your buddy at work and you guys got along and you guys went to the bar and you guys had some beers, but you didn't freaking love him. Cause if you loved him, you would have went to him and said, Hey dude, we can't have any more. No call, no shows. Yeah. It's not acceptable. You're hurting us. You're not hurting just Matt. You're hurting us because you're our leader. Mm -hmm. And when you're not here, we can't do what we have to do. So we have to love on it. So I looked at, I looked at this young man. I said, did you love him? And he goes, no, I didn't. And and the light bulb went off because if you're going to be, if you're going to be a wussy and and you're going to have buddies and friends, and you're going to surround yourself with these weak minded, uh, um, guys out there you're not gonna win either right well you got to care enough about somebody to tell them the truth right and you know That's a lot of people don't because they don't want to make waves or whatever it is and it's like um you know you can be direct you can be kind you, you don't have to be direct in a d-bag about it right you could be kind and like hey dude man like one of my one of my biggest go-to word tracks when i had to have a conversation with somebody whether it was a co-worker or my business partner in the past or, you know, way back in the day or one of our employees was, um, Hey man, you don't seem yourself. What's going on. That always cracked open the conversation instead of me being like, yeah. where the hell were you for, you know, whatever you, you, you've been slacking or there's too many callbacks. I would always start with, Hey man, you don't seem yourself lately. You know, what's going on. A good one. And a lot of times they would immediately just, they would gaze, their gaze would, you know, head down to the floor and they'd be like, I know, man, I've got this going on. And they just own it like right away without you even being a jag about it. But so let me, let me ask you this. Um, right, well, anyhow, Tom, yeah. I didn't mean to go. I, I, no, I no, no, you're good up about that stuff because I, I feel like we did something that most service contractors out there can't do. Mm-hmm. You, you, they don't have the power. Um, now there's, there's a, there's, like you said, there's so much to this. So I didn't mean to go off on a, a tangent. I need to, I, no, get I think it's important because stuff the, and I get jacked up. No, I think it's important. And, you know, my job is just to kind of fill in a couple of things that are going on here. Right. So a couple of things I want to point out a lot of, a lot of you guys listening are like, man, I want to have a culture like that. Um, I love my guys, but I can't do breakfast. Like there's a lot of, th- I want to go the, back to the money here. A lot of the things that you're doing for your team are because you've committed to making money, right? Like you just can't wake Amen, up a lot man. of, you know what I mean? And so, and, and how you're using the money and, and the millions of dollars that are coming in and the way you give and do all these things that you do to take care of your team, to give them opportunities. I mean, you and I talked the other day about how you didn't, um, uh, one one of your leaders in the company, you let him go fix his own problem because he came to you and you were like, I can't fix this for you because if I do, I'm going to undermine you. Like, yeah, I, we've had these conversations. And so guys, you got you to gotta commit to making money, right? Because you can't buy breakfast if you don't have money, right? And shit like that. Number two, um, 
I hope that you guys have some vision. And when I say you guys, I don't mean like I'm, I'm trying to be accusatory here to everybody listening, right? right? But there's, dude, there's, Matt, there's so many people that are like, I tried employees and I'll never do it again. You know what I mean? You've heard those contractors. And I, and hopefully some of you guys have a vision for what it can be, but you have to understand that you have to earn the right to get there, right? You got to show up. You have to be consistent, 400 and something meetings in a row, yeah. never missing. You know, part of, part of the reason that, you don't have a stronger culture. People don't have a stronger culture is literally the consistency piece. Like we're going to have a weekly meeting and then three weeks in it's inconvenient and you go, Oh, we'll skip it this week. You know? So what do you tell that person who might be um, had a bad run with employees in the past? And then, you know, <laughs> one side of their mouth, they're like, I'll never have employees. The other side of their mouth, I want to grow my business. I'm like, well, dude, you, you got to have a team, right? Right. How do you build culture? I guess, you know, what do you tell that guy who's, you know, it's, it it really is the kiss method, man. Yeah. Just keep it simple, Simon. Uh, well, Mm -hmm. some say stupid, uh, at a young, my daughter was really young. She said, dad, we don't call people stupid. I I, I don't like ignorance and stupid are are different. Um, so I have to, you have to be careful. That's, that's another topic for another conversation. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know what? Some people will say, uh, man, you got a lot of people, you, you got a lot of team members out there. And I say, yeah, you know, 112. They're like, oh, man, I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I kind of laugh and I'm thinking, I gotta be honest with you. Almost all of them are my buddies. They're my friends. Right. Um, we do things together. We hang out together. Uh, we razz each other. We pick on each other. We hold each other accountable. These are, this is my, my world. And, and uh, to be honest with you, uh, I'm, I'm in a brand new office here. I just built this office because I moved out of my dream office. I built my dream office in the town of Waverly. Now I've moved out here because I want a little bit more privacy, but, but I also know that my people needed a bigger office and a better office. So I moved them in there and I, and I don't mind that. Yeah. Right? Without these people though, we don't crank out the work that we're cranking out. And, and, and I don't want, I don't want to necessarily get in the numbers because I, I really do want to stay humble and, and be who we are uh, because I, I have a tendency to be arrogant and to be a little cocky uh, because I really do believe that when it comes to doing what we do, building fence and building sports complexes and building net, we are the best. Mm-hmm. Major league okay. baseball calls us when they want something done, when they yeah. want the field of dreams built, they call us when mm-hmm. they want a job done in Puerto Rico, they call us. Uh, when 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 a, a uh, when our number one contractor in the nation calls and says we need you in Hawaii to do three quarters of a million dollar project in Hawaii, they call us. Mm-hmm. So we do really do piss excellence. Yeah. But without those guys, I would never ever be able to have the experiences that I can. And you know what? This is what I'm called to be. I'm called to be, to be here for these people. This, I really do believe this is my mission, my why is is to take care of these people and i want to be honest with you even this morning i was stressed out a little bit because one of my companies is is struggling financially this month and i can't get my people to understand hey you've got to have that sense of urgency so you're never really handing mm-hmm. everything off but mm-hmm. boy you sure don't want to micromanage anything at all give it to them and let them fail uh fail around here we say uh, fail is first attempt in learning Mm-hmm. You got to let your people do it once in a while. You got to let them screw up and be there. It's just, it's just like raising kids. Uh, you know, uh, my number three, <laughs> my last one is uh, 18. She's going to be uh, moving out, going to school next year. I've always said you, to parents that are struggling with their kids and, and they're smoking dope or they're drinking or they're, or they're getting in trouble at school. I said, man, You should be thankful that that's happening under your watch so you can make corrective action. Mm -hmm. Let them fail. Give them just enough rope that they'll get in trouble. You want them to do that. So when they go off on their own, because we call ourselves bird launchers, we Mm -hmm. launch the birds out into the world. We're not empty nesters. We're bird launchers. Different way of thinking about it. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with your people here. If you don't ever want freedom then micromanage your people and and do everything for them Mm -hmm. but if you want freedom where you can wake up in the morning and decide i'm going to work by the way i go to work anywhere from four in the morning till eight in the morning whenever the hell i want yeah 
other than Mondays, because I have made that my special day. By the way, someday I have to give up my Monday morning meetings, but man, I love it. Yeah. I can walk in there. Good morning. What's going on? And mm-hmm. I feel everybody instantly. And I can, by the way, I also, am, I'm going all over the place, but hold on. I'm going to get somewhere. Every Monday I go around and I fist pump everybody. Cause I, I stole a, a line from Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan said the odds of somebody making a, a shot after he touched them or gave them the pat on the back or on the, on the butt or whatever it was that, that they had that confidence. Yeah. But he could also make sure that they're ready for it. So I go around every morning and I fist bump every single person. Mm-hmm. Now, as a leader, there's a couple things I'm looking for. I'm looking for who's ready for the battle. Yep. Who's hung over? Mm-hmm. Whose shoulders are slumped? Who's mm-hmm. hurting? And there's been some guys that I've walked up to and I said, you know what? I can still smell alcohol on you. You're going to get in a lift today and you're going to hurt somebody. So why don't you go home and sleep this off? And I've dismissed them. No, I don't freak out on them. Yeah. Say, you know what? You're not, today's not your day. Yeah. You come back tomorrow refreshed and ready to roll. Uh, now there's usually some consequences with that. They have to come in, explain to us what, what happened, what they're doing. But that, that's for another, another time, another story. I, I, we could do this for hours, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. But but that's the part of of the leader that I want to be. And by the way, you only get to be a leader if people are willing to follow you. Mm-hmm. And I believe that I've got 112 people that are following me, but I'm not in the front. Mm-hmm. I'm the wolf way in the back, mm-hmm. making sure that they're all okay, yeah. making sure that that the that they've got what they need and, and I'm taking care of them and that they're physically, mentally, and spiritually ready for the battle. Because what we do, Tom, this is not an easy job. Mm-mm. Paint, I don't care if you're painting, roofing, drywalling, um, framing, building fits. It's, a, it's tough. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's a very profitable industry and you can make really, really good money. Really good money because people are getting out way faster than they're getting in. Yep. Yeah. So you've talked about leaders and you've talked about, you know, not holding people back. How do you, do you have a, um, any criteria that you've used to determine whether you think somebody's ready for more responsibility in your companies? Holy like cow. How, how do you, how do you know? Right. So, right. So, so I've screwed this up more times than I've got it right. Um, and, and, I, I've I've actually so I'm a pusher, right? So mm-hmm. I I I believe in uh, our people more most of the time more than they believe in themselves, and I'm always like, hey, you're ready for this. You want to because I so so one thing I always tell the guys is say I always say, listen, don't ever ask me for more money because the answer is no. But go out there and make yourself smarter. Mm-hmm. Take on a little bit more responsibility, be willing to work some overtime. And then if I don't pay you what you're worth, then stick it to me, go work for my competition mm-hmm. and I'll learn really quick. I have to learn some lessons too. Sometimes yeah. I have to yep. be held accountable. I don't want to be, I don't want to be held around. I don't want a bunch of yay sayers, a bunch of yes men. Mm-hmm. Now we don't want to be disrespectful, but tell me if I'm not taking care of you, show me that I'm not taking care of you. With that being said, when when in our Monday morning meetings, we talk a lot about being a leader out there. And you don't have to necessarily be the foreman to be a leader, right? Mm -hmm. You can be anywhere in that crew and be a leader and keep your head on a swivel and be looking. But what we've done is we've come up with this little plan where now we started pulling in about 20 to 30 guys at a time and putting them in a room and talking about what leadership looks like and talking about accountability, talking about taking care of your family, talking about being a, a good father, uh, mm-hmm. talking about being a good husband, talking about being a um, just overall a, a nice person that doesn't make the lady at Walmart cry. Mm-hmm. You know, we talk yeah. about these things and then we let that cream slowly rise to the top. And I told everybody last Friday at our meeting, I said, listen, when I was a kid, my aunt had a milk house and we used to always go and get fresh milk and we'd get it in this big two gallon Tupperware like this. And then, and it was always fun because you would set it in the refrigerator for about 24 uh, to 36 hours. 
And then you would go and you would grab that, that two gallon jug as slow as you could. And you set it down on the counter. Now this is 10, 12 years old, right? So I'm a little kid. Yeah. And then you would take that top off and you would take a cup and you would just skim that, that cream off of there. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're looking for that cream to rise to the top. So we've started a program that we're literally looking for the cream that's rising to the top. And we're telling the guys, listen, if you come here and you listen and, and you apply yourself and you carry your little notebook, we have a little blue notebook that we give uh, potential leaders and we carry them. And when they see me, they show me the notebook. They literally will hold it up when I'm driving by them on the road. Uh, it, it, yeah. that, that way, all those little things, that's that cream rising to the top. And then we're going to skim you off and we're going to go have cream and peaches, baby. And th these go. are all the little weird things that we do here to try to find those leaders because sometimes they don't even know they're ready to be a leader. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the hard part. So here's, here's something that, that just hit me. I, I don't know, captain obvious here. Um, <laughs> you do your meeting on Monday. Yeah. We've said Monday, we you, Monday meetings, Monday meetings. I, I'm like, you do this Monday meeting and it really just hit me. I'm thinking back, like we always did ours on like a Wednesday, you know, and this and that. And I don't know if I can think of somebody off the top of my head. I know we never did a Monday meeting and we never did it on a Monday because actually, let me flip this. I find it interesting. You're starting the week with the meeting instead of starting the week with all the shit that normally goes wrong on a Monday. Bingo. You know I mean? So Bingo. yes, <laughs> here it is. So, so, so we start every Monday and, and here's the thing too, is I am teaching the, I drill these guys in their head. Listen, the greatest day of the week is Monday. Mm -hmm. You get all week long to make money, to win, to get ahead, to be awesome. Friday's the day where you should look in the rear view mirror, which by the way, the rear view mirror is small. So don't spend a lot of time looking there, but look yep. back and go, man, I missed so many opportunities. And as a business owner, that's the day you should be the most excited to get up and get going is yep. Mondays, Mondays. And if you tell them, well, first of all, it's, it's like two or three fold, right? I'm trying to spin their thinking of, oh, got a case of the Mondays. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Monday. You know what? Screw that. Yep. And I want Mondays to be when we start winning. Well, you think of the, it's the, their very first work activity of the week is, right? is a family get together that with the rare exception of six or so times out of, 400 and something meetings right. have, have been, you know, little in your face. Right? right. But it's normally like you're adding value to their life. But what were the, there were three things you cover in the meeting, right? Life, those again? A life skill, life skill. Yep. Safety, uh, which a, a life skill could be anything like shaking hands. You know, yeah. Tom, a lot of guys don't understand that when you shake hands, you should open up your hand nice and wide. Mm -hmm. And you should look at their hand right at their, at the crotch of their hand. So you don't miss it because you have one opportunity for that very first impression. So let's get a good handshake. Let's don't be soft and weak. Let's be men. Yeah. You know what? It's okay to say we want to be men in this world. So I always teach them you go down. Now, if you're at a party with a name tag, your name tag should always go right above your arm because mm -hmm. the idea is, is you go right up that you read their mm -hmm. name and you look them right in the eyes and you say, hello, Tom, my name's Matt Warner. It's a pleasure to meet you. And I always tell them you give one or two hand firm shakes and then you step back because more than likely you're either a smoker, a chewer, or you've been working or you have BO or you have something. So we don't want them to smell our bodies. Mm -hmm. We talk about this at Monday morning meetings. Yep. Yep. Because if I can teach you this life skill, now when you're out there on that job site and that and that general contractor walks up and you go right in for that handshake and you and you're ready for him, mm -hmm. now we've set the tone of who we are. Well, I so imagine, yeah, I, I'm yeah. So you got life skill, you got safety, and what, what else? Uh, leadership. Leadership. Okay. I imagine a decent percentage of your workforce are maybe younger men yeah, who yeah. might not have had mentors in their life. I mean, you know, I'm thinking of a kid right now. I know, I know, and um, I'm not going to say who it is, obviously um, not getting a whole lot of help from his family. Yeah. You know, he's a really young dude. He's off on his own now. Um, 
hasn't been taught what it means to work. Like, and he's not lazy. I don't mean to paint this picture of this lady, but, but he's like, he hasn't realized that you work hard and there's another gear. He hasn't um, learned some basic um, just skills of how to treat a woman. Yeah. You know, how to carry your own fucking water and what that looks like in life. And, and I like the guy, he's a good dude. So I'm, I'm trying to like be careful here. Um, when I coached high school football for 17 years, we had a lot of kids didn't have a dad in the picture, or if he was, he traveled and was never home. They'd make a shit ton of money. And they were the spoiled rich kid that yep. just didn't get the attempt. You know, you've seen it all. Yep. And one of the things I learned, which is interesting to me when you were talking about going around fist bumping everybody. Okay. This leadership training I got, this guy was, he works with all these NFL teams and this and that total guru. And um, he's like, when you do your stretch lines in the morning, Every coach should have a line, mm. rotate, rotate the lines each day per coach. So they're different kids. And while they're stretching, you walk up to the kid. He says, look him in the eye, put your hand on their shoulder, on their arm or whatever. And he goes, now, if this sounds weird, okay. And literally just go, Hey, Billy, how you doing today, man? Or, Hey dude, I know you've been sick the last couple of days. It's good to see you here at practice, whatever you're looking in the eye. One of the things he shared was most of these kids, and I, I believe in our world today, most human beings don't experience somebody genuinely looking in their eyes once a day and touching them. Like, yeah. we're not talking inappropriate right. shit here, right? But like most, when you fist bump somebody, yep. when you put your arm on somebody in a professional manner and a, a yes. caring manner, yes, sir. Um, that might be the only physical touch they get all day. And this yeah. is a deeper con uh, conversation, but like human deep. beings are designed for yeah. touch and relationship yeah. and things yes. like that. And so that, that we started doing that. Um, and so you going around, looking them in the eye, fist bumping, um, spending the time together. This is huge because our world is so into these things, man. People don't know how to have yep. conversations with each other, with these phones, I love the phone. I make a living on the phone, right? It's all good. Yep, me too. But like, but like I'm, you know, I've, we have five kids, you know, our, our last one just moved out yesterday and got her own place. We moved her in and, um, and the only world they've ever known is a world of texting and downloading. If you think about it, they yeah. never knew a world and it's not their fault. Right. No. And so then we get pissed at them because they don't know how to have, like, if, if you want to freak a teenager out, um, make them have them make a phone call yeah, to a store, you know, like, Oh, is that store open or something? And if they can't find the answer online or whatever, we'll just call them and ask if the order came in. I can't call them. Yeah. Like it's, it's just this really weird thing. So what you're doing, get to the fucking point, Tom, you're, what you're doing is facilitating an opportunity for them to be to grow as men, women, human beings in some way that they probably didn't get anywhere else in their life. Cause we know they're not learning any of this shit in school. Right. But you know, you're talking about personal skills. Uh, you know, it could be finances. It could be debt. It could be how to manage your fucking money. It could be exercise. I mean, relationships, how to be a better spouse. I mean, all these things I know that you cover none, nobody's getting that in school, dude. No. Nobody's talking about life skills and, and whatever. Um, no, and I'm so telling I you, just applaud you for it because it's like, you. yeah, it's well, uncommon. It, and that's why people it, want to work for you, by the way. <laughs> it, it, well, we do. We have a lot of people. Right. And, and, uh, and you know what? Did you say I have a waiting list right now? Was that you that we, told me that? We have about 10 people uh, that, that want to come on board. Uh, now, we're going to try to find spots for them. We're trying to, the, our problem is we, we just recognize that uh, we need to spend a little bit more time finding uh, the cream. And mm -hmm. so right now we've started a program where we're starting to do some training right. where I put little teasers out there like, hey, if you respond to me between 10 and 2, uh, uh, I have a, I have uh, something for you. And then they have to respond to me between those times. And and if they, they call me, I call that the step forward, right? Uh, be, uh, I mean, I have so many things I want to tell you. The number one uh, way to be more confident is to take that first step. Action. Action mm -hmm. is action leads to confidence. So I force them to try to make some action uh, to see if they're ready for leadership, right? So that's me fishing. Mm -hmm. Who's ready to be my next leader? I need, uh, matter of fact, we're ready to go. Finding work isn't really the problem. 
Um, finding people really isn't the problem. Building leaders is the problem right mm -hmm. now that we we're facing. Um, we have a great culture. Hey, and one more thing I want to make sure that you know that this, it's very important that that, that that meeting is in a circle. And, 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 and I always tell them now we've gotten so big that it's hard for us to put 90 some men in a circle, but I always tell them, Hey, make the circle as good as you can, because you can change the circle. Mm -hmm. You can take a step forward and the guy next to you and the guy left to you can, can step with you. Or you can say, Hey, step forward a little bit here. That's leadership. Or yeah. take a step backwards a little bit to make the circle. Over. And why do we meet in a circle? We meet in a circle because it's the Knights of the Round Table to show equality because we're getting ready to go to battle. Yep. Every week is, is tough out there on these guys. Not only do they have to go all week long having a general contractor or a homeowner or somebody kick them in the nuts, but then they got to go home and they got to they got to help with dishes and they got to help with laundry and they got to they got to make it to their the p a t ball game. They got to do mm -hmm. it's really really hard out there. So yeah. let's start every Monday with about thirty to forty minutes together as. Mm -hmm. a group, a team and say, we're going to do this together. Yeah. When I, when I do these, uh, I do these workshops and, um, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day, I'm going to be doing one for, we're pre-planning it, um, on some culture and things like that. I have this belief that, um, silence separates. Mm. So like, if you're not together, if you're not communicating, like for you, you guys are physically together in the same room at least once a week as a whole company. Well, this, you know, sometimes there's these, like yours is big enough where you probably have different divisions, right? This crew does yeah. this type of shit. Lots this of guy, Right. Yep. And it's easy for the people in the divisions to never communicate. And then they're like ripping on each other. Right. You know, and they, it, it creates that, that little, now like a little good competition is great, but when it, it goes negative, it's bad. And anyway, I was talking to this buddy of mine we were doing this workshop and I'm like, dude, I said, you got to just no, step one here is facilitate, create an environment where they're, t they're communicating with each other. I don't care if it's, you know, coffee once a week as a company. I don't care if you send out a, a morning text to all of them where everyone's on the thing. You go, Hey, everybody hit me back with one word of how they're, how, you know, how their weekend was or whatever it is. I don't care. You have, there's too, my point is there was too much silence in the company. And I experienced this um, with my very first business partner and a little bit here and there through the years with others. Uh, Cause it's just my nature. I I'm very independent. Um, I'm very driven like you. And I have to make sure that I'm communicating with my partners and stuff. Mm. Um, we used to talk when we started our first painting company, we talked multiple times a day he's in his van i'm in my van we're both out conquering the world we're touching base on the drive home got our earbuds in hey man what'd you do today i sold this and i did this and blah like and it was just the momentum was there well as we grew and got bigger right those conversations happened less and less yeah you know because yeah. we both had more responsibilities and what happened is the silence separated us to a point where where i go is i start making up um, I start making up stories in my head about, oh, he's not working as hard as me, or he's not, you know, all this other bullshit. Right. And, uh, and then we got some coaching and then we started, um, uh, that's when we started our Friday mornings owner meeting where we blocked out from like 9am to like one o'clock, we were going to meet, go over the, the business shit. And then we would go hit a bucket of balls. We would go eat lunch. We always ate together on Fridays. And that that helped a ton because we intentionally didn't allow silence to creep into the business. And so that's right. what I love about the Monday meeting. There's so many things about your Monday meeting, dude, that you're just facilitating. That's part of your job as a leader, you guys, right? If you, if you're having, if you're not like you talked about eating together, right? Mm -hmm. If you, you know, if you, well, you know, military guys, athletes, right? We're so tight on the team because we sweat together. We win together. We get our asses kicked together. Yep. Right. We eat together. We drink together. You yeah. Know, all those different That's things. Right. And if your team is only, if they're never communicating as a whole, it's easy to think that you're alone. 
you know, and all this other bullshit, like, you know, um, I'm on an island with my crew. Nobody gets me. You right. Know, and you start making up all these stories. So whatever. It's exactly right. You know, and, and when our Monday morning meeting is over and we dismiss everybody, then we do what we call our, our small huddles. And and it's funny because everybody just gets in their little groups and, and every once in a while, I'll call a group to me and I'll say, Hey, I want to meet with this group. I want to meet mm-hmm. with the local, uh, the local contractors. Uh, so we have, we have travel, we have travel, commercial, travel, netting, local sport, uh, access control. Uh, I mean, we have all these different divisions, right? Lots mm-hmm. of divisions. I mean, we are, we are matter of fact, I, I tell people all the time, if, if you dream it, we'll, we'll make it happen. So we just, we're dreamers here. We, mm-hmm. we don't say no, uh, we're the opposite. We say yes to almost to a fault uh, to where it gets me in trouble sometimes, but mm-hmm. I've learned the margin of error is it's better to say yes and fail than to say no and never uh, attempt it and have regret. So yeah. that's how I choose to live my life. Now for your listeners, I'm not saying that's for everybody. You got to be pretty tough uh, to mm-hmm. be able to take that. And you got to be able to get knocked down several times and to be able to get back up several times. But with that being said, I will tell you this, the number one uh, for your for your listening audience out there. And by the way, uh, Tom, if you ever, ever wanted me to come and do a, a Monday morning meeting type thing in, in a group for you, I'd be happy mm-hmm. to do that. I'm very proud of what we've discovered. We stumbled across it uh, kind of on accident. Mm-hmm. It all started by a toolbox talk. Yeah, that's what it was. It was a company told me, hey, every Monday you have to have a toolbox talk. Great. So we did it. Next mm-hmm. thing you know, I'm like, hey, you know what? These guys like this. We're safer. Now, mm-hmm. this was when we had 15 people. Can you imagine? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 15 people got together. It was really simple. And then it was 30 and then it was 40 and then it was 60 and then it was 70. And now it's, uh, you know, 90 to 100, uh, depending mm-hmm. on where everybody's at. We have we have crews that are stationed all over the country. So sometimes we fly them back in and spoil them and put them yeah. up in a hotel. Uh, but we, we, we are a for-profit. We, we make pretty good money. So yeah. we, we, we love to love on them, but that's, I guess that's what I was going to get your listeners out there. If they're not going to commit to a Monday morning meeting or, or, or whatever it is, they're probably not really serious about culture. Mm-hmm. They want to talk the talk, but they don't want to walk the walk yep. because they, they see that lost productivity. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and by the way, you know, as contractors, I tell contractors all the time, how many days, how many days a month do you really have to work? Well, and they all say, oh, 30. I'm like, well, no, you have about 20. If you're lucky, you don't have any holidays in there. Yep. And then, and then every month has a national average of how much rainfall you get or weather days. Right. Yep. And that's usually two or three every month. So now you're down to 15. Okay. Or, or, or let's just say 18. So now Mm -hmm. we're at 18 days in a month to try to do, uh, you know, for us, it's, it's a couple million dollars worth of work a month. Well, we have 18 days. And then I take uh, about four or five hours every month just for Monday morning meetings. So now I'm down to 17 and a half. Yeah. And now you have to go to the dentist one day. So now you're down to <laughs> 16 and a half. I mean, really, if you think yeah. about it, guys, uh, listeners out there, you only have about 14 or 15 days to try to make hey, baby. Yeah. So you want those guys to be as ready and as efficient as you can. So mm-hmm. don't screw it up. It's that glass of water. Every time you hit a bump, some water uh, falls out of it. So give them the smoothest start as you can and, and love on them and coddle them and take care of them on Mondays and then send them out there to kick ass and take name. That's culture. If you can have that mindset. All right. Uh, last thing. One of the last things here before we go. Okay. Uh, I want to ask you, you started these in what? 2015. Yes, sir. Obviously, your business is, has grown and scaled top line, and that's, you know, we're not getting into details of that. But I'm just curious, like percentage wise of increase in profit. Um, I have it. What, what, what it. is that? What are those meetings it. done? Oh, OK, so so in 2015. Uh, now, remember this. So some of these numbers are a little bit uh, silly because w- w- there's only two ways to grow. And I want to try not to digress here because uh, you either have to use borrowed money or profits to grow. Uh, when you're growing uh, and you're, you're, you're trying to push your company, you're, you're eating into your cash flow and the cash flow is, is king. You have to have uh, money to keep buying trucks, to keep buying equipment, mm-hmm. to keep uh, hiring people and to take that chance every once in a while. And by the way, those of you out there listening, when you have a great person come along and they need a little bit more per money, don't don't hesitate. 
Get them on your team. Yep. Stop messing around because yep. you need that person. You don't want to surround yourself with people that make 12, 13 bucks an hour. You want that guy that wants 30, 30, 40 bucks an hour. So stop farting around and hire him. But in 2015, we were running about four or 5% at the end of the day. At the end of the day, at the end of the year, we were making about four or 5%. Um, this year, we're on pace to make about 14%. And I'm telling you, not... So my banker came to me uh, and I'm going to be real careful because I don't want to talk too much about numbers. I'd love to, yeah. if, it, if you ever wanted to talk privately to yep. share it with other people, I would love to do it. But it, it, uh, my banker came to me and he said, Matt, I don't understand how you're doing this. You're adding more people, uh, more land. We, we officially now own about 400 acres. Um, mm -hmm. I'm farming some of it as a hobby. It's my side hustle. Mm -hmm. I, I do it because I, lo I love farming. I, I know that I'm crazy, but uh, he goes, how are you adding buildings and building buildings and adding people and adding this and your mar profit margins are going up. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, it's the people. Yeah. The, the people are protecting the bottom line because they know that they're not working for me. They're not running for the uh, whip. They're running for the rider. And they want greatness from them. So, so they're not running because they're scared. They're not running because uh, they're, they're afraid to make a mistake. They know if they make a mistake, it's, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. We're going to hold you accountable. And we're going to say, Hey, that was a bad decision. Don't do that again because you, that you, you know, that one hurt. You kicked mm -hmm. me right in the nuts, but mm -hmm. now I got my breath and let's rock and roll. But I'm telling you, as we grow, we are making more money. Now, it also, I'm smarter with our money. I hold on to our money a little bit better. I invest our money. I, I, I stop investing in the stock market. I stop investing uh, in all these other things. And I invest in this company yeah. right here yeah. on the back of my shirt. It says yep. uh, the family. I mm -hmm. invest in us because I have the most control over that. And by the way, uh, I do have uh, some retirements and annuity. I have some different things, but I'm, I'm these people out there that are trying to dabble a little bit in the stock market or do this or do that. You know what? Stop it. Do what you're really good at. Mm -hmm. And then yep. invest in yourself first so you can make some more money. Now you have to put some money away. I mean, well, I have a mutual fund. Mm -hmm. I, I, the bank just gave me a mutual fund for five and a half percent. So I put, mm -hmm. I put a, a lot of money in there and I said, that's, that's, that's my emergency fund. Yeah. I love this by the way. And I, Tom, yeah. I know that we had a hard time getting this going and I know I talk a hundred mile an hour and it's probably even hard to understand what I'm saying half the time because I get so damn excited, but I love what we do. And I love I our can people. Tell. I can tell uh, it, it, it bleeds out of you. It oozes out of you, which is good. Um, I, so um, I, I want to, I want to encourage people to um, take a, take something from this episode guys about loving up on your people and investing in your people, invest in your team. Like, don't be such a cheapskate with this stuff. And, and for God's sake, be consistent. I mean, you, without you coming right out, Matt and going, you got to be consistent. You are showing us how to be consistent doing this 416 times in a row. Yes. Right. It, and and never what did, missed. You say, what did you say you budget a year to pay for the meetings? This year it's one hundred and forty thousand dollars. We're at one eleven yeah. officially today. As of Monday, we're at one hundred and eleven thousand. Yeah. So that's guys. That's over. That, that's over uh, eighty five hundred bucks a month that he's paying. Right. Yes. yes. To bring the, his team together and invest into them, and and the net return, the ROI is you have people that care, right? Yeah. You have people that give a shit about making the money and finishing jobs on time and having each other's backs and all these other things. So, um, and, and I guess finally, guys, you're never going to grow. You're never going to grow. You know, if you're a million and you want to get to two, you need people. If you're a yes. two, you want to get to eight, you're going to need people. And, and I'm learning, I mean, dude, I, I transitioned from CEO to founder of the contractor fight a year and a half ago. I, I, um, I heard that. Yeah. And Neil's our, our CEO. He's amazing. And we are, um, we're so much about the conversations him and I are having behind the scenes now are about people, you know, it's like, who's our, who's our next key hire? What's the key hire that's going to put another 5 million in our bank account and, right. and our bottom line and grow this company. Who's the key hire? Who's the person. And um, cause I, 
I was not getting the job done as the CEO here. I'm too visionary and I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, so tell me, was that yeah. a tough pill to swallow? And I know, I know we're about out of time, but yeah. real quick, was um, that a tough pill to swallow to admit? Because right now I'm having a, a hard time uh, with understanding a little bit of my new role, but go ahead. Was that yeah, hard? I, it, it, what was hard was um, I, I already knew there were things that I wasn't doing that, um, because they involved administrative type shit. And I run from that stuff like it's the plague. Wow. And yeah. so, you know, Neil came in and and he doctored up and, and beefed up all our processes behind the scenes. He's, you know, uh, installed some things for benefits for our employees that I was dragging my feet on. And he just got shit done. He's he's the, um, um, the integrator or the implementer, right? He hates right. the word integrator because he's way more than that. But um, mm -hmm. what was hard for me um, so I was, I was actually excited to go run the day to day because I knew I could focus my time and energy on the next level of our growth success and those types of things, which has been great recently. And we're actually, we're, we're actually all flying uh, into St. Louis this week. Our team is, uh, our core team. We're doing our strategic planning meeting and we're just kind of getting real a little come to Jesus time with the inner team. And, um, and so, and we're doing it in St. Louis because none of us live in St. Louis, by the way, our team's scattered all over the place. So we're going, you know, away from distractions, away from, you know, our normal routine yeah. and good get for away, you. right? Good for you. One of the biggest topics of conversation that, that is going to happen <laughs> in St. Louis is what's Tom's new job, meaning my struggle has been, I don't, how do I word this? Since I moved to founder, like, dude, shit just runs in the fight. It runs really well. We have amazing team and great coaches, all this stuff happening, right? And, you know, we put it on the events. I just got to show up to the event and talk like it's, you know, and then I do this. I, I have conversations yeah. like this. So the company runs without me and the conflict that I've had is like, I'm a carry your water type guy. Like I want to carry my water every day. And I don't know what my water is mm. right now. Wow. So it's, I'm literally going through it. I mean, I don't mean to make, this isn't like some violin sympathy no. thing. It's just like, I it's a great it. problem to have. Cause you, we talked about this the other day too. You're like, I don't, I'm some struggling. days I don't know what to do. Yeah. And I, I talked about like when I coach and do workshops for people, I want to get you to a place in your business where you're bored. Yeah. Right. It ha where you're and like, it happens. I don't know what to do today. And that's, happens, and so that's where I'm at is um, I know. And, and every time that I have some sort of moment and season in life like this, um, one of my coaches, he talks about, it's like, I'm pulling back the bow and I'm getting ready to launch to something bigger because I, I can look back and I can see those big launches and, and things that have happened when I've gone through a season of transition. So it's just been interesting that, like if you're a salesperson um, and your job, let's just not even in the trades, you're just, you're, you work for some online indeed.com. They have a sales team. They got to make like a hundred dials a day, you know, outbound dials. Let's just go with that. That's a very cut and dry. Did you do your shit today or not? Right. And right. as you know, now in the role you have, and I have, it's not the same thing. Carrying your water every day doesn't look the same. No. And that's been one of the struggles for me personally is like, how do I know I did my job today? Yeah. And well, so I, and I, that's and I where told I'm at. You, yeah. I, I've been struggling with it too. I told you one day I went home and, and did laundry and, and cleaned the house. And, and I was a mess because I didn't know what the heck I was supposed to do. Nobody yeah. needed me. And you know what? It's hard for me to not want to be needed by, by, by somebody yeah. to put out a fire somewhere because that's my, I'm a, I'm a take, I'm a take care of you kind of guy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to hold you accountable. I'm going to put you, put you back to work, but I'm also, I'm there for you. What do you need? Yeah. And, uh, but that's well, tough. And well, that's that's been the other that's been the other thing that that Neil and I've talked a lot on is I'm like, dude, here's the keys. Here's where I want to go. You run this baby, blah, blah, blah. And let me know what you need. And it's a really hard, as you know, a hard line to walk. Because yes, if I'm not involved enough, it's like, oh, I don't care what's going on. And if I'm involved too much, I'm stepping on his toes. 
you know? So again, it's just a new scene. And him and I have known each other like 23 years or whatever it is. We're, right. I, I used to be one of his subcontractors. We go way right. back. So we have a great relationship. We could be honest with each other. Um, these are some of the conversations we're having. We're like, dude, I, you know, I have all these ideas all the time and I know you're trying to implement the shit that we said was important. And, and so, you know, I don't, I don't want to bring things up and, and fuck up your mojo, man. Right. That, and and so, it happens. Yeah. You know, it's funny. So that's why I call myself the CVO, the chief visionary officer, because mm -hmm. I really am trying to figure out how to paint this picture. And, and I, I do a pretty good job at uh, success. Uh, you have, it, in order to have some success, you have to be able to paint the picture and then you have to be able to see it when you're done. And when you mm -hmm. look back and you're okay, that's good. But then you can't be uh, complacent with that. You got to be saying, all right, we're going to go paint the next picture. And uh, I can go yeah. on for hours about that, but Tom, I, I appreciate your time. Yeah, man. You got it. Um, so, uh, so if somebody uh, wants to learn more about what y'all got going on, where do you want them to go? You know, you know what, uh, right now, I don't even know. I don't even know why I'm, I'm talking to you, Tom. I really don't. I, you know what? We're trying to sell our software. Uh, yeah. Our software is in the fencing world. We're going to be taking it in the roofing world. We're going to be taking it into some other worlds. And and I don't know. I just, uh, right now, if you if you want to know more about Matt Warner, go to empire-fence.com and, and, and send us a, a thing. And anybody that needs help with uh, a little something here or there, I'd love to try to help them out. But mostly, I came here to, get, to help you get maybe get some content to where you say, yeah. you know what? That was good stuff. And yep. I appreciate it. And then you'll call me up and say, Hey Matt, let's, let's, let's do that again sometime. And next thing yep. you know, we, we have some synergy going. I also found out that never, ever miss an opportunity folks mm -hmm. seize the opportunities. And this was an opportunity that uh, Caleb, Caleb said, Hey Matt, you yep. ought to talk to Tom. And, and yeah, next he thing called you know, me and he's like, you know, and it's Caleb Roth down at um, stain and seal experts yeah. and uh, great, great guy. And he's like, you know, cause I saw him in Vegas at, at a show there and he called me up and he's like hey you know do you know matt and i'm like no and he's like i think you guys just need to know each other and so like he texted us both or whatever and within yeah. an hour you called me up and we shot the shit and you know whatever so yeah never miss an opportunity guys you know to collaborate and yes. and um i just knew that the journey you're on the way you're impacting people i think it's leading the way for for how to do things right. And that's why I wanted to have you on, have this just totally you know informal what? conversation about culture and if, if people and want whatever. more then then they need to reach out to you and say, Hey, mm -hmm. let's get that goofy guy back on there. We there want to learn go. more about it. I have all kinds of ideas. I'm a student. And I always say, you know, if you don't be a follower, be a student, uh, learn as much as you can. So, it, you know, by supporting you, you're supporting Matt. Uh, and that's what mm -hmm. it is. I don't even know. There's, there's, there's really, I'm not selling anything. Yeah, I, I'm, well, I'm good. I don't even want to brag about what we're doing. Yeah, I, I, I'm just passionate about culture and and people, and and I think that's my gift. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all it is. Tom. Well, and I, I encourage you guys to check out the website and the links. Also, guys, you know the software he's talking about is called My Salesman. All yes, right, sir. and so check that out if you're in the fence industry, or roofing industry, because that's coming soon. Yes, sir. Uh, and. um you know, give them a follow on the socials and all that other garbage. Yeah. Cause yeah. you know, you drop some cool stuff there and guys go to the website and check out the video of the, the sunrise meeting that he did. Cause I think you really get a sense for the type of culture he's built continues to build. And uh, dude, with that, I appreciate you. I love shooting it. The breeze with me here today. Glad we finally made it happen. And uh, guys, give us a rating review, share this with another contractor. Appreciate y'all. And we'll talk to you next time on fight. Fight.